Uh, in keeping with the policy of giving the press as much information as possible and also allowing ourselves to be questioned by the press on any matter in relation to the fire and the subsequent events, uh, I've decided this Friday afternoon to indeed call this press conference and uh, for you to know that there have been some major accomplishments, of course, at this stage, the tarmac area at Luziknan has been completed, and uh, there have been some minor difficulties and so on, but have, they have been corrected to the extent that at least 400 prisoners are now there in better conditions than in the swamped area that they were in. There are still a number of prisoners in the swamped area uh, we felt that it was necessary because we do not want them to contaminate the, the 400 and more that uh, are in the tarmac area. These are the real bad ones that have done a number of acts which make us believe that if they were to go into that new area, we might have further troubles. In addition, we had 151 who are in the actual prison at Luziknan, under the buildings, as it were. So we have 151, about 80 in the swamped area still, and uh, about 400 in the new tarmac area. I must say that there have been major accomplishments at the Camp Street site too. Uh, the demolition job, sorry, the, the removal of the debris uh, uh, was completed. And we have only this afternoon come up with a plan as to what constructions we are going to make at the temporary level for purposes of ensuring that the prisoners from Luziknan can be transferred to the brick prison uh, so that we can even get better conditions there. But we require for the support of those prisoners a kitchen to be constructed. Uh, an admin building to be constructed, an infirmary to be constructed. And um, it is going to be quite costly, though it will be temporary. All these ma major constructions there that will have to make the place safe uh, will, will cost a, a good set of monies. Um, in the vicinity, we see is, is over a, a half a billion dollars, quite frankly. Um, the final figures, we will find out from the quantity surveyors and all of that, but the plans in relation to what we have to construct and the security systems and all of that um, have been designed during the past 72 hours because that was a track that we had to fast track also. Um, I also want to say that um, in relation to the manhunt, for the four, that continues. Uh, more specific questions in relation to all other matters, you can direct and it will be a free flow of answers and questions. I would like to leave it there um, and open for questions, really. I'm Kurt Campbell, so it's just two quick questions. I wanted to know if the intention is to transfer uh, the prisoners who are still in that swamp area to Camp Street, and how soon do you expect Restructure. That is exactly the point. We want those uh, that are the real bad ones to be in a safe area in that new brick prison, mm -hmm. and uh, because that will be safe. But that brick prison has to be supported by these adjuncts, as it were, the kitchen because you got cook for them, the administrative staff because you got to secure them, and that might take a couple of months, the least. Um, from what the designers of the buildings have told me this afternoon only. And uh, so it is going to take some time. We do not want to put them in a brick prison without these necessary uh, ancillary arrangements put in place and buildings that are going to be quality enough, um, that are not going to be set on fire and things like that uh, by anybody. So it will take a minimum of, I think, about two and a half months to three months for the construction of those um, other 
buildings and uh, some additional things like the, as I said, the administrative building, the infirmary, and the kitchen area, along with ensuring a, an inner fencing um, so that it will be very, very secure. Minister, follow up, sir. Um, how many prisoners are currently in the swamp area and will they remain here until the next two and a half to three months? There are currently 90 prisoners in the area reported as the swamp area, but I can say to you that efforts are being made in order to enhance that area in terms of sand filling so that the situation that was previously aired via social media would not be the condition that they are kept under for whatever duration they will be there. And the, well, how cooperative are they to the efforts of sand filling? Well, two things. One is that whatever is being done is being done to provide a better environment for them. And two, the fact that we have a smaller number to deal with, it means that we can utilize the training staff that have received overseas and locally in order to push them in one area to carry out whatever work is necessary within there. And given the condition of the swamp area, are they being given any sort of uh, preventative medicine, say against diseases such as uh, leprospirosis and any other uh, transmittable disease? I'm not aware of preventative medication, but what I know is that all persons in need of medical attention, they are offered that. Um, we have not had any case that required, well, one case we had that had to be referred to the Georgetown Hospital for attention, but besides that, the doctor and other medical staff on the ground, they have been dealing with all of the medical complaints um, brought forward so far. Um, it was reported that the, that the government will be moving to the National Assembly for emergency funding. Um, can you give an idea of how much and for, for what purpose? I just indicated it will be in excess for at least the purpose of building the prison and the tarmac area and removal of debris. It will be, I haven't gotten the final figures, the bill of quantities and all of that will be made finally by tomorrow morning or later tonight. These contractors and quantity surveyors are working hard. But by Monday, certainly, because we have to go for supplementary uh, budgetary allocations by Tuesday or whenever, you know, the next parliamentary session um, dates, and it will be, as I am being told, in excess of $500 million. I don't know what the final figure will be, but it will be in excess of $500 million. Travis? Travis? Mr. Gentleman, what can you um, tell us about the investigation into the fight? Well, first of all, you have to understand that this is a very large incident. Investigations have already been launched. It is continuing. At some time, there will be a conclusion to the investigation and the report will be made. Well, Martin Haley, K3 News. Um, at the last press conference, it was mentioned that some amount of documentation was lost during the fire. Um, what's the process right now in terms of reproducing some of those records? Has it been started? That process has started, and I must say today that we, have, um, we do not have much work to do. Because most of our current records, um, they, were, they were entered into the inmate management information system. Unfortunately for us, the um, hard drive is secured. So we will be able to retrieve from that um, almost all of the information uh, on the prisoners. A follow-up. Um, prior to the fire, when last was that hard drive updated? It's on a daily basis. Inputting of information is done Monday to Friday by uh, a special team of Clark that have been employed to do so. As, as more prisoners are allocated to both the Mazzaroni prison and to the Zutan prison, has the Guyana Prison Service um, stationed uh, additional manpower police to these prisons to help with the influx they presently have to control and to ensure security in case of the standard? The Guyana Prison Service deploy prison officers, but at the joint services level, we have foot systems in place to have the 
prison staff, complemented by members of the Ghana Defense Force, Fire Service, and Police Force. We are also constantly assessing those situations, and additional staff will be deployed as is necessary. Have you been right. getting any um, resignations coming from those first prison officers that might have, or that were working on the day of the fire? Um, and if so, could you say how much resignation you would have received? And could you also confirm if at any point after the fire, um, most of all of those persons that were on duty that they were placed on the close arrest? Or whatever term you all would use in the prison service? No one has been placed on the close arrest. I have not received any resignation. What's the other question? No, how many of you did receive? Well, I did not receive any uh, That answers that, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the question? What? The minister here, I think, I'm going to pull. Sir, um, can you put a figure to how many prisoners were transferred from those hands to a mass group? A total of 210 prisoners were transferred to the various prison locations. Can you state uh, the, the capital that will be allocated for the construction of these additional facilities? I thought that I said that it will be in excess of $500 million. Um, the construction of what will go on in Camp Street, the cost for the removal of the debris over the couple of days that those people were working on it, and the cost of the tarmac area, and what will happen at the swamped area, all told will be in excess of half a billion Guyana dollars. Sorry, sir. Yes, two questions. Um, it's resolved that the last time we were here, um, I had asked you about ballistics in terms of um, the prison warrior being shot five times, whether or not more than one gun were used on him. Have you been able to complete that? And um, Mr. Samuel, in terms of the enhanced work for the swampy area, could you say how long that is likely? Sand filling and sand filling. Be the shortest. Based on the estimate we have, uh, the work can actually be done within 24 hours, um, commencing tomorrow once we have the necessary cooperation. If it is a situation whereby we require to deploy force in order to get the work done, well then we'll have to do a detailed assessment because at this time we will not endanger the life of any contractor, um, contractor because we have to utilize the specialists operating the machinery to go in there. So all of those things will have to be taken into consideration. And no, the analysis is not yet completed. I can't determine that. <laughs> Travis? Commissioner Prasad, could you bring some clarity as to what really happened at um, that hospital? I have some, some uh, is it GRA or? Yeah, Skeldon. Skeldon Hospital. So what is reported to us is that the was an accidental discharge by the said individual who got injured, and he went to the hospital. And that's a GRE officer? GRE officer. Um, did it, um, was the situation investigated because they followed the protocols and not identifying themselves properly or immediately? No, or imme what was it done? there is a protocol for hospitals to call the police immediately upon recognizing that there is a patient with a gunshot wound, and that was done, yes. Mr. Um, could you give us an update on how the manhunt is going? And secondly, there, it has been reported that uh, Desmond James, the president of Scotland under West Bank, he was taken there by, uh, allegedly taken there by a female. Can you say if any efforts were being made by the police to apprehend the person? We have a story from um, James that doesn't include a female or anyone else, except. Um, and another escapee who would have given him money, which he used to take public transportation to go to that location. Um, the uh, manhunt is, as I indicated before, intelligence-led operations. Yesterday, we had some information which led us to Linden. A person was arrested who was not one of the persons. Uh, one of the escapees, and then we had a confrontation with Safri Alexander at Port Morant.
it's, it's Other it's activities are still ongoing. Is he still believed to be a burpees? Uh, Alexander, yeah. yes. Can you confirm if he was arrest? shot by the police? We cannot confirm. There are reports that the, the police uh, did uh, discharge rounds and reports that what appears to be blood was seen. Any indication that the others are with him? He's alone. And, and that was the intelligence before and as well. The they are all um, alone. Alone meaning they are not together separately. with other, other um, separate. Uh, separate from each other. Yeah. Have you been getting a lot of cooperation from the public? In oh, terms yes. Of settings? Yes. Um, they, they say what they believe they see or hear. And you quickly And we, yeah, we do our own analysis and respond when we think we should. And we would like that to continue, please. And you reporters, yeah, make I'll, the call for us. Sorry. I also want to make an appeal to the relatives, instead of having confrontations with police and so on, they should encourage them to, you know, come in or call us and tell us where we can go. And Mr. President Director, could you say how soon can we see um, scanners being installed at the various prisons as part of your efforts to enhance safety? As soon as funds are made available in our proposal that Minister spoke about today um, for the work to be done at Camp Street, That's all of those, um, all of the necessary support um, technology mm -hmm. is there in our proposal. And to prisons. We've, I must say that we've already installed one mm -hmm. at the new holding facility at, at Lusignan, however. Can you... Um, into a bit um, into more detail about um, these technologies that are included in the proposal. It would not be appropriate no. at this time. For security, obvious security reasons. For the questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, at the last press conference, you said that uh, with the exception of one, all of the weapons were from the army were accounted for. Um, have you managed to recover that pistol? No, we have not been able to. Follow well, up to the, the accidental shooting in Boy Beast Commissioner. Um, that, that weapon was um, confiscated by the police as an investigation being launched. And, uh, and could you. Yeah. There will be an investigation. No, the weapon was not confiscated. There's no need for that. Minister, would you like to conclude with them? I yeah, I want to say that um, I want to thank all the contractors that came to help out remove debris, do the job at the tarmac area, and we'll be doing the job in relation to the swamped area, the construction works and all of that. And if I didn't before, also thank those businessmen that gave their buses that night to ensure that the 1,100 and more prisoners were transported. And although lots of these buses had their seats destroyed completely, I want to say thank you very much. Um, uh, it, these are the, some real trying times that we are passing through. And I want to state how grateful I am as Minister of Public Security for their efforts in coming forward to help in a moment that we really needed them. And that's how we have to behave in this country. Um, yes, the criticisms will come, uh, but at the time when we really required their services, they came forward. I also want to, to say that at the, the level of the injured persons, they have been, some of them have been transferred from the hospital to the... To, to another safe area uh, because indeed we want them to feel comfortable and very safe. Um, and uh, so I want the press also to heed the appeal of the commissioner to carry the line that indeed family members and friends of these escapees to bring forward the information um, so that we can as best as possible catch in the manhunt, these these escapees as early as possible. Thank you very much. We'll allow Leroy to squeeze in a question oh, no. only because it's yeah. his birthday. Oh, it's his birthday? 
Happy birthday, Leroy. <laughs> Uh, got, uh, around the birthday week. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't um, Minister, could you confirm if if you will make you as Minister of Public Security will make recommendations for these contractors who might have given you pro bono service during this period? Um, any form of um, mentions, awards, what of you, what of you? And could you also say? I know you might not be able to do it now. But could we have a list of those contractors that are working at the various facilities as a result of this? All right, well, I'll make uh, that available for the press. I just wanted to tell them how thankful and grateful we are. And that's about the... Um, <laughs> that's about what we're giving them, quite frankly. But, but of course, yes, indeed, some of them will have to be paid for their efforts, too. Because it was big efforts that night and continuing the days after. It can't be free, of course, it can't be free. That is why I'm telling you that it is coming up a half a billion dollars for all the works done and so on. All of Travis, my figure. Go ahead. Could you take it in mind that we have the rest of the press get a visit to the campus prison, see the works, you know, get some decisions done? The works is going to take a long time. It's not going to start just no, now. Not, not, not good for security. So that's another thing.